Hi everyone, welcome back to the Gate of Heaven video diary and I hope you're all enjoying the new song Lord of Grace Abounding. If you haven't heard it yet, it's in the link below this video. And uh, now that it's the month of May, I am really, really excited to tell you that Gate of Heaven is going to be officially released as an album in its entirety uh, this month on the, 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 on the night of May 22nd the night of the commemoration of the Declaration of the Bab. And it's going to be, I'm going to release the album at about two hours after the moment of sunset in Shiraz, Iran, uh, in, in honor of um, that, that very moment when the Bab declared that night to, to Mullah Hussein, I am the gate of God and the world has never been the same since. <laughs> So I'm really, really happy to, to make that announcement and, uh, and yeah, share that news with you. And there will be one more song that's going to be posted uh, before the album release. And I will tell you a little bit about that song in the coming videos because it's, there's something a bit different and a bit special about that song. So look out for news on that in, in the coming videos. But in this episode, we are going to dive into the, the, the last of the great upheavals described in the Dawnbreakers, which, which Nabil describes as the most devastating of them all, the upheaval of Zanjan. Now, just to, to uh, provide a little bit of background about the, Zan, the Zanjan upheaval, you, you might remember uh, back in those days when when the Bab was living under house arrest in the home of his uncle. Uh, uh, and uh, even though he was confined to his uncle's house, his message was spreading like wildfire all over Iran. The letters of the living were blazing a trail from north to south and east to west, convulsing the nation with the news of the coming of the Promised One. And it was during this time, of course, that Vahid had been sent by the king to investigate the Bab's message. And it was also during this time that one of Iran's leading uh, ecclesiastical dignitaries, essentially a high priest of sorts, also of his own accord sent an emissary to investigate the Bab's message. And this emissary came back with uh, with a, a, a copy of the Bab's commentary on the Surah of Joseph, that, that very first book that he had revealed from Mullah Hussein that night in 1844. And the moment this priest reads the commentary on the Surah of Joseph, he, to the horror of his clerical peers, he embraced the message of the Bab. And along with people like Fahid and Baha'u'llah and the Letters of the Living, he became uh, one of the most, the, one of the boldest champions of the Bab's message. And the name of that priest was Hujat. And so Hujat is known as a, uh, as a formidable character. He, he uh, Nabil tells us that, that, uh, that he, he, uh, he, he had a character that was at the, at the same time, very loving and very fiery. And we're told in the Dawnbreakers that his outspokenness and strength of character made him the terror of his adversaries. And in his hometown of Zanjan, he, he had, through, through years of dedication to his people, he had really established himself in their hearts as their, as their, their finest moral guide and, and, and their most their most in enlightened spiritual teacher. And of such a high standard is Hujat's education of his people that many members of his congregation come to surpass in knowledge and wisdom the, the professional priests around them. And of course, this doesn't go down well at all with Hujat's peers who, who constantly for years try to discredit him to no avail. In, in fact, even the king is convinced of Hujat's superiority as one of the most noble religious leaders of the land. And when Hujat embraces the message of the Bab, the members of his congregation listen with open ears, many of them following in his footsteps. But of course, his fellow priests see this as the perfect opportunity to strike and be rid of him once and for all. So they, they, they gather together and they say, his reputation for justice, for piety, wisdom and learning 
has been such as to render it impossible for us to shake his position. Now, however, that he has so openly championed the cause of the Bab, we can surely succeed in obtaining from the government the order for his arrest and banishment from our town. So at that time, Muhammad Shah was still alive and Haji Mirza Agassi was still the ruling prime minister. And so uh, these clerics start, uh, they start writing defamatory letters uh, to the king denigrating Hujat and accusing him of spreading heretical teachings. And so in order to settle this tension, both Hujat and his, his fellow priests are summoned to Tehran to come to the royal court and to, to thrash this matter out under the judgment of the king himself. And so Hujat and his peers, uh, they arrive in Tehran at the royal court and uh, and Prime Minister Agassi addresses Hujat, saying, Muhammad Shah and I are continually besieged by the oral as well as written denunciations brought against you. It grieves me to hear that a man whom I consider infinitely superior in knowledge and ability to the Bab has chosen to identify himself with his creed. And Hujat replies, Not so. God knows that if that same Sayyid were to entrust me with the meanest service in his household, I would deem it an honour such as the highest favours of my sovereign could never hope to surpass. And Prime Minister Agassi bursts out, This can never be! And Hujat says to him, It is my firm and unalterable conviction that this Sayyid of Shiraz is the very one whose advent you yourself, with all the peoples of the world, are eagerly awaiting. And so, with irrefutable arguments and with the, the most perfect dignity, Hujat defends himself with the king as witness from every accusation that his peers throw at him. And the king is totally won over by Hujat and he, he sends both Hujat and his humiliated opponents back home to Zanjan. However, after Muhammad Shah dies, and the new government is established. Nasiruddin Shah and his new Prime Minister Mirza Taghi Khan, having dealt with the, the, the upheavals in Mazandaran and Nairiz and, and the seven martyrs of Tehran, now feel that it is their duty to extinguish the activities of Hujat. And so in the spring of 1850, the great storm of Zanjan begins. And it all starts with a squabble between two children in Zanjan, the child of a Babi and the child of a Muslim. And without making any attempt to investigate what's happened, the, the cruel governor of Zanjan, Majdu Daule, immediately captures the Babi child and throws him in prison. And Hujat, on hearing this, protests to the governor and demands that the child be released and a conflict escalates like a tornado spinning rapidly out of control and so incensed is Maj Majdu Daule by Hujat's demands to release this child that he sends he sends his officers marching through the streets of Zanjan making a public announcement that that cuts the city in two telling the people Whoever is willing to endanger his life, to forfeit his property, and expose his wife and children to misery and shame, should throw in his lot with Hujat. And those desirous of ensuring the well-being and honour of themselves and their families should stay well away from Hujat and his companions. And within a matter of hours, the whole city of Zanjan is sliced down the middle, half with Hujat, half against him, and of the, the latter half, Nabil tells us, encouraged by the governor's tacit approval of their expressed intentions, they resolved to put to death all upon whom they could lay their hands without obtaining beforehand an express authorization from the government officials. They solemnly covenanted among themselves not to rest until they had extinguished the fire 
of what they deemed a shameless heresy. And so as this tornado is tearing apart the very fabric of society in Zanjan, Hojat gathers his congregation together and says to them, I am unwilling that because of me you should suffer injury. The one aim of the governor and of the ulamas who support him is to seize and kill me. They cherish no other ambition. They thirst for my blood and seek no one besides me. Whoever among you feels the least desire to safeguard his life against the perils with which we are beset, whoever is reluctant to offer his life for our cause, let him, ere it is too late, betake himself from this place and return whence he came. Well, no less than 3,000 devoted members of Hojat's congregation, men, women and children, who are unwaveringly loyal to him, stand by him. They leave their homes and they follow him. And just like the Babis in Mazandaran and Nairiz, they, they take shelter at, a, at an old fort in Zanjan called the Fort of Ali Mardan Khan. And at the instigation of Prime Minister Mirza Taghi Khan, the vast numbers inside the fort are matched on the outside by an army 3,000 strong that descends on the fort with the express orders to annihilate their city's most enlightened spiritual teacher. So we will continue with the storm of Zanjan in the next episode. Thanks for watching.